everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is part two of the McDowell's employee costume for Halloween. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to do a costume bow tie just for this purpose. It's, I'm not gonna do like the whole thing with the adjustable strap pieces and I mean, it's a costume. We're gonna end up using snaps or Velcro in the end. So that's what this is. Let me go ahead and I've already kind of prepped my pieces. Let me explain what we're doing here. So it consists of four pieces, okay? We're going to have the little strap, the tie strap, not the strap for your neck, but the little strap that goes, there's, that go, it goes like over the bow, like you'll see in a moment. This little piece, this one measures three and a quarter inches by two, okay? Then we're going to have, this is actually four pieces. It's each, each piece is interfaced. So I have the bow is 4.5 by 9.5. So four and a half by nine and a half inches. So nine and a half, four and a half. And then I already took the liberty of putting my interface and I have them on both pieces. And also note, I did press the fabric prior to putting on the interfacing. Well, I, I pressed all my pieces. You wanna make sure everything is nice and straight so you have a very clean, crisp bow when you're done and as you're going, you know. And this goes for any sewing project. Once you cut, press. Sew together, press the edge. Like everything press, sew, press, sew, press. And then the last one is the tie strap. Now I measured, this is how I'm doing it. I measured my neck, which is 14 and a half inches. So I added an inch on. So you're going to, this is for me, like if you have this neck, my neck circumference, just measure your neck plus an inch in length. So 15 and a half by two and three fourths inches. So go ahead and do that. Next, what I'm going to do is let's put together our bow. Now, let me put this here. So everything we do on one piece needs to be mirrored to the other piece. And also, tip, if you're going to be using water in your iron, which I do suggest for this project because it makes things iron a lot better, always use distilled water, or if you don't have distilled water, if you have like purified water in a bottle or something, use that for your iron because all the minerals and stuff from your tap water will clog up eventually your steamer and what has happened with me in the past when I've been lazy and I haven't used distilled water, um, I'll go to shoot steam on something that I'm, I'm, so, um, I'm pressing after I sewed and it just shoots out like salt deposits or calcium deposits. So like it'll shoot white powder at my clothes, which is very bad, especially if you're sewing for someone and it's a black garment, you do not want white powder all over their clothes and you have to like wash it and then start all over again. So that's, that's the purpose of this. Also, or you could just straight out break your iron and then it won't shoot steam anymore. Like that's not good. So let me just tilt this a little more. So what we're doing here is we're going to fold this in. Let me get my measuring tape. And we're just gonna measure, let's see, what is this? So what we're doing is we're going to fold this in no particular way, but we want to make sure that the width of this, once we fold it, is two and a quarter in width. So let me just fold this again in no particular order or measurement when pressing this. Just the end result when it's folded has to be two and a quarter. Fold this again. Let's check it. Two and a quarter. Okay, so I'm good right here. Check the other side. Two, a little, a little off right here. Two, there we go. Two and a quarter. <clears throat> And 
then once you have that, just kind of go across all your pieces. Um, if you're wondering, I have a very high pressure, a pretty high pressure steamer. Uh, this is a Rowenta brand. I had bought it at Macy's with the matching upright stand steamer. And um, honestly, I got lazy with that one too. And now my Rowenta stand steamer is clogged. I gotta figure out how to unclog it myself because I got too lazy at one point and just kept using tap water. And I freaking broke it. And just a short story while I'm getting this all done. I took that steamer with me to the Lancome commercial shoot that I did. True story, I'm not making this shit up. Um, I'm in the conference room with the hair stylist and we're prepping, she's prepping the wig for the shoot. I'm prepping the wardrobe that they provided me, you know, taking out the wrinkles and making sure I don't need to sew anything that's falling apart. And lo and behold, my Rowanta steamer does not work out the get-go, it's clogged. I had used it the week prior, couldn't believe it. See here, I'm just gonna like eyeball it and make sure that they're, they're exactly the same. I'm not gonna re-measure it. So yeah, that happened to me. So I had to freaking run to Walmart and get a new little steamer. And yeah, it's money wasted. I'm, and like, I looked like an idiot. So word to the wise, just use purified water or buy the distilled gallon. It's like 98 cents at Walmart. Just do it because I ended up screwing myself in the long run and I know better. I'm just being, I was just being straight lazy up until that point. But now I'm far more disciplined. In fact, I make distilled water part of my grocery list every time I go to the grocery store because I also sometimes will make cosmetic stuff and it calls for distilled water. So that's just my rant on that. If you wanna see the Lancome commercial I assisted in for the US shooting, you can check out that repost on my Instagram at Egypt Machine. I will put it on the screen for you so you know how to spell it and you can check that out. Okay, so these, these are about identical, are about identical. And once we have our two pieces, what we're gonna do is just fold this again, equally towards the center, and just have these two parts meet. Make sure you're, you're kind of checking, like eyeballing it, what, what's the center, because you don't want it to be like, like that, you know what I mean? Like you gotta have it in the center. So, hold on, let me fold this in. So once you have it pretty much in the center, just put your iron on it and press it down. So you have it like that. And repeat for the next one. And if you have some little things, take them off. Clip them. Let's move on to the next step. Ah, it's hot. So now, um, I'm, not, I'm gonna do this off camera. I'm not gonna show you, because I, I figure you know what you're doing at this point. What we're gonna do now with matching thread, so in my case, like a red or, mm, yeah, red, because that's the main, main color. Uh, I'm gonna stitch in the center on both sides really close to the edge just to like tack this down and you're going to do it on both pieces so on this one and on this one don't sew like half inch away like you want to make sure you get all the layers but like really close to the edge we're just kind of tacking things down not basting but we're, we're sewing it down to hold things in place so let's go ahead and do that and then we'll come back okay so skip ahead a little bit I sewed the two pieces on the side, like I was saying, like right near the edge. And then after I did that, I put them right sides together. 
like the two the two open parts were touching each other so that way and then and then you'll stitch them I did a zigzag stitch um, just to make sure I was grabbing all what is it four layers in this case um, so as you can see it makes like little so it's like floppy it makes like a little X but so that there you go so like just look at it now like once we put the little the little tube to that covers because it's going to cover this it's going to make like a crease so can you see like the bows already forming so that so now all we have to do you can make this pretty quick um, you're going to fold this and you're going to stitch it like an L, like a like this, like a backwards L, or yeah, like a backwards L. Um, so word word of caution though, when you do this, um, and this again, there's no real seam allowance that I want to give you. Just kind of eyeball it. So just think from the stitch line in here, make sure it's wide enough to cover all the stitching that you did in the middle. So in this case, once I stitch it. Um, should still be wide enough. So I'm, I'm going to do, yeah, I can do a half inch stitch just to make sure. And then, so that way when I do turn it inside out, it still covers this. Like you don't see any of the, the stitching I use to put the bow together. So do that and then turn it inside out and press. Same thing here with the tie strap, fold it. And sew it like a long backwards L, so like this. Turn it inside out and then press. And then the rest of the stuff, uh, to finish it off, we're gonna be doing some hand stitching. So let's, let's uh, do that. So I've already turned my tie strap inside out. If you are wondering how I did that on a piece that long, I actually used, um, it's a very long bamboo, bamboo skewer. You can buy it. Um, I bought these when I was doing s'mores with my kid because that's kind of what it's for. It's like a s'more stick and I bought it in the camping department at Walmart. That's where I got this really, really long chopstick looking thing, but it's to make like s'mores and very large kebabs and things like that. Um, I haven't flipped this one yet because I wanted to show you what I did with the other one. Now, whenever you have a 90 degree angle, you need to clip the corner. So clipping the corner is just coming up to the intersection of the stitch and you cut off a little rectangle as close as possible, okay? I didn't cut into the stitching or past it. I came as close as I could to it. Then before we flip it inside out, we wanna reduce the bulk. So we also have to trim this off closely so like that okay and on a small piece like this you could use a pencil or I use um, a safety pin god I forgot what it was called for a second and then just turn it inside out and then press it the same way that you did or that I did here so now let's do the hand sewing part um, I'm using a really thick needle only because, and I think I mentioned this in the first tutorial, the fabric I got is like a thin fleece. So with the, the double fleece here, the interfacing, um, it's pretty thick. Uh, hence also why I have like a plier next to me because it's gonna help me sew and pull this through. Um, if you had regular cotton, just use a regular needle and thread and you probably also won't need the pliers, but I'm just making note of why I'm using these things. So first step here to help us, um, let's see, hold on, let me just trim this long piece of thread right there. There we go. So first things first, what we're gonna do is we're going to scrunch this together and sew it in place. Okay, so I'm just gonna scrunch it Actually, let me just take my needle and thread here. Let me knot it. And then I'm just going to scrunch it with my fingers and try and take it 
through all the layers. Again, you'll see, because my fabric and everything is so thick. I, I mean, it's a shame they didn't have it in cotton because then I wouldn't be working this hard to have this go all the way through. Let's see if I pull my string, how everything kind of just comes together. So that's what, we're, that's what we're doing right now at this point. We're just trying to tack everything down in preparation for the little bow tie strap. Not the neck strap, but the little bow strap. So now we're gonna do, as you can see here, I, I finished gathering it. This is the underside. See all this really nice gathering here. And this is the other side. So you can see there's a nice pleat or gathering like that. So it's, you know, this is what it's, what it's looking like. Okay, just kind of open this up a bit. Okay, that's looking really nice. Now what we do is we're going to take our very long strap, we're going to fold it in half to find the center point, which is right here. Then I'm going to just kind of mark it with my thumb and I'm going to stitch it to my bow. So hand stitch this, and then the last thing we're going, well not the last thing, because we still need to add the, the closure on the, on the sides of our neck strap. So tack that down by hand. Same thing here. Go around really tight. I'll probably have to use pliers again, just because this is gonna be hard to hold. But you see, like, we're just gonna do that, so want to overlap the raw edge and cover it with the the edge that was sewn in an L when we did that part and then we're going to hand stitch all of that together so we're going to stitch the next strap first cover it and then cover it with the little bow strap and overlap it as so now again I'm struggling only because I everything's really really thick because I'm using a very thin fleece so it's, it's still gonna work, it's just a little more effort for me. And then the last, last, last step to finish this off is you can hand stitch little snaps on the end, because remember this, this whole neck strap should be your neck measurement plus an inch. So you're gonna put like a little uh, snap here, or in my case, again, because this is just like a costume bow tie for me I'm just gonna put down like some velcro um, yeah and it won't it won't really make a difference in my opinion because all this is going to be I mean the next strap it's all going to be covered by the white collared shirt that I wear that you wear the bow tie around so the only thing that's really visible is your bow tie so let me finish all of this you go ahead and do yours too we will have the final result in a moment Okay, so I added the Velcro to the end of my bow tie. So like, you know, there it is. And then I got my hat that I made. <laughs> so that's, those are two. Now the next video that I'll be doing is the vest. And then maybe like a shopping vlog. Because I did mention in, in the first video that the rest of the costume can be purchased, which is like the white long sleeve collared shirt and your blue pants. So I don't know. I may or may not. Just depends if I have time or if I even feel like it because I feel that's, I mean, that's not a really special part of it. But yeah. And again, remember, mine's really thick because I had really thick materials. But if you can find a good thin cotton that looks really close to it, by all means, I would suggest that even more. Um... So again, because uh, you couldn't really see it in like the video right now, but this is the 32 inch bamboo skewer that I used uh, to help me flip my the whole neck strap. Uh, just repeating, you can 
get this in any camping department. I got this in the camping department at Walmart. And you know, I mean, they're, they're handy. Like I use these with the marshmallow on the end with my kids, but it also makes a great tool in your sewing kit arsenal. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. The vest tutorial will be coming out soon and other tutorials for costumes this year. Have a great weekend and bye-bye.